So pKa is the dissociation constant of a drug which may indicate the strength of a drug as an acid or a base in a given medium. As we all know that only the non-ionized or non-polar drug can cross the plasma membrane and the degree of ionization of a drug is largely determined by the pH of the medium and the pKa of the drug. So pKa of a drug is defined as the pH at which 50% of the drug acid or base exist in its ionized or the hydrophilic form and its non-ionized the lipophilic form in a one-to-one -one ratio. In other words, the ionized form coexist with the non-ionized fraction a 50 to 50 percent or one-to-one -one ratio. The two forms of the drug dissociated and undissociated exist in the form of an equilibrium obviously however pharmacologically pKa values of a compound do not tell you exactly how a drug would behave in a solution and we will try to find out the answer to this question later in this video. The most important thing to realize about the drugs acidic or basic is their pKa values given in the literature. However, on technical terms, the only sure way to know whether a drug is acidic or basic is to learn the functional groups that confer acidity or basicity on a molecule. According to the well-known bronsted lowry concept, also called the proton theory, which was introduced in 1923 by the two chemists, an acid donates a proton or hydrogen ion, whereas a base accepts a proton or a hydrogen ion when acids and bases interact with each other. We will have a look at few examples. Aspirin, which is chemically known as acetyl salicylic acid, is a weak acid. Its equilibrium dissociation reaction is as follows, where acetyl salicylic acid with a carboxylic function is dissociated into carboxylate anion and of course it is a proton donor. As mentioned earlier, pKa is determined by the nature of the functional groups which play a part in the dissociation like for example here it is a carboxylic function which has a pKa equal to 3 therefore pKa value of aspirin will be 3 and if you go through the literature the pKa of the aspirin is recorded as 3. Here we take the same example and carry out some calculations in order to know how much percent of aspirin for example is ionized in a given medium. As we know that pKa of aspirin is 3, pH of the stomach for example is 2, we use a modified and rather simple form of the henderson hasselbalch equation which will calculate the percent ionization for us. According to this equation, percent ionization is equal to 100 over 1 plus 10 to the power x times pH minus pKa in parentheses. It is important to know that the value for x is minus 1 in case of acidic drugs while it is 1 in case of basic drugs. We put our values. So 100 over 1 plus 10 to the power minus 1 and 2 minus 3 in parentheses which is pH minus pKa. This becomes 100 over 1 plus 10 to the power 1 or 100 over 11 which is equal to 9 percent or we can say that only 9 percent of the aspirin will be ionized and the remaining 91 percent is the unionized fraction which could efficiently diffuse across the membrane. We take another example 
this time with paracetamol, which is chemically known as N-acetylparaminophenol or acetaminophen. Paracetamol is considered to be a very weak acid. Its equilibrium dissociation reaction is as follows, where N-acetylparaminophenol dissociates into phenoxide anion and a hydrogen ion chemically. As you can see that it is the phenolic OH which dissociates into phenoxide in a hydrogen ion and as we know that the pKa of phenol is 9.5 to 10 and it is considered as a very weak acid. Phenols are very weakly acidic compounds and therefore paracetamol is a very weakly acidic drug. Here we calculate the percent ionization of paracetamol in the duodenum using the same modified Handelson Hasselbalch equation. As you can see, no paracetamol is ionized in the duodenum. I want you to participate and do some calculations. Please have a look at the problem statement. A patient is prescribed with intramuscular amoxicillin. What percent of the drug will be ionized in the blood? Now pKa of the amoxicillin is 7.4 and it is a weakly basic drug. pH of the blood is 7.4. For your convenience, the answer is given below. Please draw a conclusion for yourself. So, do not go anywhere because here is another problem for you to solve. This time, a patient is prescribed with nitrofurantoin for the urinary bladder infection. The question is, what percent of the drug will be unionized in the urinary system? Now, the pKa of the nitrofurantoin is 7.1, and it is a weakly acidic drug due to, due to the presence of imide group. pH of the urine, for example, is 6.1. As you can see that only 9% of the drug is ionized in the urinary bladder while 91% of the compound is unionized or in other words lipid soluble which is essential to kill the susceptible microorganisms in the urinary bladder. Well, there are some more interesting facts about the pKa and how it represents the measure of a drug's strength. For acids, a low pKa means the drug is a good proton donor and a strong acid. If pH is less than pKa by 2 units, means 99% of the drug is unionized. If pH is greater than pKa by 2 units, means 99% of the drug is ionized. For bases, a high pKa means the drug is a good proton acceptor and a strong base. If pH is less than pKa by 2 units, means 99% of the drug is ionized. And if pH is greater than pKa by 2 units, means 99% of the drug is unionized. Now, you can verify all these by the previously mentioned modified henderson hasselbalch equation, and you will get the answers. The literature mentions some more interesting facts according to which very weak acidic drugs have a pKa which is greater than 8, for example paracetamol. The pKa is 10. Moderately weakly acidic drugs have a pKa which could be between 2.5 to 7.5. The example is aspirin. The pKa is 3. 
Here I want you to think over it and recall your memory. Or you may please go back in the video and see the difference between aspirin and paracetamol ionization scenarios. And you can figure out the strength differences of the two acids. On the other hand, strong acidic drugs have a pKa less than 2, for example sodium chromoglycate, the pKa is 1.9. Very weakly basic drugs have a pKa less than 5, for example diazepam, the pKa is 3.5. Moderately weakly basic drugs have a pKa ranging from 5 to 11, for example atropine, which is 9.7. Strong basic drugs have a pKa which is greater than 11. The example is gonathidine. The pKa is very high and that is 11.4. In the end, we would like to draw some very important conclusions. First thing first, all these scenarios could be more theoretical than practical. However, they can predict the acid-base nature of a drug in a given medium. The reason why we say theoretical rather than practical is because, for example, a weakly acidic drug such as aspirin should practically be more readily absorbed from acidic mediums such as stomach. However, practically, most of its absorption takes place in the first part, the small intestine or the duodenum. Therefore, most students often get confused because theoretically, the calculations tell a different story while the real picture is often quite different. Different research studies had concluded that the passive diffusion or absorption of aspirin was higher in duodenum than the stomach, which clearly shows that other complex pharmacokinetic and biological factors equally play a vital role in the process and the concept is not as straightforward as explained from the pH and pKa and all these calculations perspectives. However, it is very important for the chemist in drug discovery line to know the acid-base profiles or the pKa values of the new compounds in order to classify them on the basis of their functional groups. So, we may conclude that pKa or the acid-base dissociation constant of a drug is a key physicochemical parameter which influences many biopharmaceutical characteristics. In short, the pKa profiling of drugs is influenced by two main drivers. First is the nature and occurrence of functional groups on a compound, while the other factor concerns the biological targets these compounds are designed to hit. Now you should be able to take this idea and go from there to do any kind of calculation and at the same time be aware of the practicality of these calculations in different biological environments. I hope this helps. Thank you.